Rodrigo Borgia was a notoriously nefarious man. During his reign as Pope, he acquired vast wealth by selling church offices and titles to the highest bidder. As a cardinal and well into his papacy, while sworn to celibacy, he sired seven illegitimate children that he unashamedly acknowledged in public and likely many others that he didn't. As a Pope, he used his vast wealth to host grand parties such as the Banquet of Chestnuts, an all-night orgy with his inner circle, his son Cesare included, and fifty prostitutes. The aforementioned son was appointed as the head of the papal armies, a son who had managed to garner his own ravenous reputation for ruthlessness through the outright murder of his political opponents, one of them being one of his sister's three husbands. The sister Lucrezia Borgia was to her father just but a pawn to further his political ambitions having married her off three times. The first marriage was into the famed Sforza family, sadly when they later lost their political pomp. The marriage was annulled on dubious grounds of non-consummation, horribly humiliating poor Giovanni Sforza on the supposed charge of impotence. The second marriage was to Alfonso of Aragon, the son of the King of Naples. When it was no longer advantageous for the Borgia family to maintain this alliance, Alfonso was mysteriously murdered. The third and final marriage was to Alfonso d'Este, Duke of Ferrara, which luckily for Alfonso turned out to be the most stable and successful. As stated earlier, Rodrigo was a lover of the forbidden fruit. Before the banquet of the chestnuts with its 50 prostitutes, and before his ascendancy to papacy, he had attended an orgy in 1460, which drew disapproval from the then Pope Pius II. Rodrigo was a handsome, charming man, and he was well aware. It was with these natural good looks, his Roman Catholic clout as cardinal, and later his absolute authority as Pope, that he was able to attract the attention of Vanozza Catanei and Giulia Farnese, both of whom were already married when they were wooed into amorous adventure with the reportedly sexy Pope. Sometime between 1466 and 1472, Rodrigo Borgia beheld the bewitching Vanozza Catanei. On top of her natural beauty, Vanozza was also exceptionally bright. This, and her being born into a wealthy aristocratic family, helped her become a brilliant businesswoman, having been able to start and run two inns in Rome. Her accomplishments were however overshadowed by her erotic entanglements with the Pope. Vanozza had four husbands in her lifetime, the first one being Domenico da Rignano, Domenico was an officer of the church, and although his exact position was not frequently detailed in historical records, it is likely that he held an administrative position. In contrast to the holy position that Domenico held in the church, scandalous speculations swirled around his marriage. It was believed that his marriage had been arranged by Rodrigo, who was still a cardinal at this point in time. This he did in order to provide himself with a social smokescreen or facade, that would mask the true nature of his relationship with Vanozza, although he would later expose this relationship by publicly acknowledging the children he had with her, including the aforementioned Cesare and Lucrezia. In addition to these two, Vanozza would give birth to Giovanni, who was more widely known as Juan, and who had been rumored to have died at the hands of his brother Cesare, and finally Geoffre, who had fortunately managed to evade the controversies that came along with being a member of the Borgia family. Of course, there were certain obligations he would have to meet as a member of an aristocratic family, but he at least didn't inherit the temperament of his father like Cesare had done. Cesare had a Machiavellian mindset like his father before him, being very unscrupulous, cunning, and focused on the consolidation of power by any means necessary, including murder. This ruthless reputation reaped him many enemies and eventually led to a dramatic fall from power when his father the Pope died. Geoffrey, on the other hand, was able to survive the political upheavals when his father died and retained his titles and lands in southern Italy. Vanozza and Rodrigo's forbidden love began circa 1466 to 1472. At this point in time, it is estimated that Vanozza would have been around 24 to 30 years old. Rodrigo would have been approximately 11 years older around 35 to 41. Some years later, however, when Vanozza would have been around 47, the Pope felt it was time to change it up, get a younger mistress perhaps, and that was when 15-year-old Giulia Farnese entered the mix. Of course, like Vanozza before her, 
Julia wouldn't publicly associate with Rodrigo owing to the fact that he was a man of faith, and secondly that the girl's age would have been a point of contention for the public. Instead a marriage would be arranged similar to that of Anozza and Domenico, with Julia being wed to Orsino Orsini, a noble from the influential Orsini family dynasty in Renaissance Italy. The two mistresses had an amicable relationship. By the time the Pope set his sights on Giulia, Vanozza had retired as Rodrigo's romantic partner and was comfortable in her matriarchal position within the Borgia family, where she maintained a certain level of prominence and respect. Giulia's relationship with Vanozza's daughter Lucrezia is historically thought to have been more than harmonious. One particular tale, although it may as well have been the sensationalized rumblings of overzealous historians, tells the story of Giulia's involvement in helping Lucrezia Borgia escape from Rome. This was after the murder of Lucrezia's second husband, Alfonso of Aragon, a murder that Cesare Borgia, Lucrezia's brother, was rumored to be involved in owing to his differing political objectives. Rodrigo and Giulia were known to have had only one child together, Laura Orsini. One may expect in line with contemporary thinking that Orsino Orsini, Giulia's husband, would have been enraged by the illegitimate child, but this was Renaissance Italy. Powerful aristocratic families had no time for vague, abstract concepts like love or dignity. Marriages were financial transactions frequently arranged for political or social advantages rather than personal affection and make no mistake about it, Orsini was rewarded handsomely for his towing the line when he was granted the mayorship of the city of Carbognano. Unlike her more famous half-siblings, Laura's life did not attract the same level of public and historical attention. She lived a relatively private life, away from the political and social intrigues that surrounded other members of the Borgia family. After the death of Rodrigo Borgia, Vanozza largely retired from public life. She became more involved in religious activities and is known to have developed a closer association with the church, perhaps as a way of seeking solace or redemption in the later stages of her life. Either way, the loss of her powerful protector meant a significant change in her status and influence, and she would have to humble herself to survive in her new reality. The Borgia family simply wasn't what it used to be. She would then marry Carlo Canale, her fourth and final marriage, likely a strategic move for stability and social positioning like those that came before. Vanozza's ties to her children remained strong, especially to Lucrezia. By the time of her death in 1518, she had witnessed the tumultuous careers and in some cases, the downfall of her children. She was buried in the Basilica of Santa Maria del Popolo in Rome. Giulia suffered a similar waning of influence after the death of Rodrigo, the days where she could influence the patronage of artists and intellectuals for the commission of exquisite works of art, such as the La Bella, which was thought to be in her image, were long gone. She withdrew from the Vatican and the Roman political scene. She became increasingly involved in religious activities, a common path for widows or women who retired from public life during the Renaissance. Like Vanozza, she shifted towards piety and charity, possibly as a way of seeking redemption or solace following the tumultuous and scandalous years at the Vatican. She spent her later years in Carbognano, a town that was part of her dowry when she married Orsino Orsini. It was here that she would die in the year 1524 at the age of around 50. The life of Rodrigo Borgia and those closely associated with him, particularly Vanozza Catane and Giulia Farnese, encapsulates the complex interplay of power, religion, and personal ambition during the Renaissance. Rodrigo, infamous for his corruption and scandalous lifestyle, leveraged his position as Pope to advance his and his family's status, often at the cost of religious and ethical integrity. His relationships with Vanozza and Giulia, marked by manipulation and political convenience, reflect the era's intricate societal and religious dynamics. The eventual retreat of both women into religious life following Rodrigo's death signifies a common Renaissance narrative of seeking redemption or solace after years of tumult and scandal. Their stories, intertwined with the rise and fall of the Borgia family, 
offer a poignant reflection on the transient nature of power and the enduring quest for personal redemption.